Shema. Doing another reaction today is Friday Morning Friday, so we're checking out a uh, horror short film. This is Whistle. Uh, once to check this out, this is uploaded by Super Freak Media channel. Check them out in the descriptions below. Uh, I believe I've done some reactions for them before, so yeah. We're gonna see exactly what is going on with this one. So let's go ahead and check this out, see exactly how this goes. He's just taking pictures and oh nice. I don't know why I thought that was a camera. Oh it is a camera. We're going to nature hikes and take pictures of the sites. Welcome Listen to a podcast. To the redacted podcast. The podcast that explores some of the world's most intriguing mysteries an unexplained event. This episode we're doing something kind of special and taking a deep dive into the realm of urban legends from around the world. It's a well-known fact that hundreds of thousands of people go missing each year. What type of words are you that you're able to... To kick things off, list or podcast, we have a figure of folklore that feeds into this phenomenon. A and take pictures without worrying about what could be coming at you. Although most cases come from England, France and Poland. I'd be afraid to have headphones on going through the woods because y'all never know what like animals or creatures will come out in the eastern <laughs> United States. Without you knowing that they're behind you, around Tell you. Me this. Have you ever heard the legend of the whistle? Now, it's unclear when tales of this figure exactly began to circulate, but in my research I found this entity to be a campfire story that dates back as early as the 1700s. Most likely created to warn the wary and inexperienced traveller of straying too far from the beaten track. The whistle is a figure said to haunt the forests of the world, waiting in the trees for its next victim. The legend goes as if you find yourself alone in the woods and you let out a single, sharp whistle. It hears you. Okay. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So if you can't whistle it sharply, hears, then... It starts to stalk you, letting you know it's there by whistling back. A perfect echo of your own call. The sound begins to get closer in a twisted game of cat and mouse. The whistle will follow you until you're out of the forest and clear of the trees. You get yourself back to civilization. You're safe. But if it finds you before then, there's no telling what could happen. I would say it looks like a house, man. What the hell? What are you doing anyway? Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Why do people get that curious? I don't understand. They hear something and go, you know what? I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna see. And then you get upset when something bad happens. It's your own fault. You caused it. Can't get mad at nobody else but yourself. So, personally, I'm a bit of a skeptic on this one. It's probably nothing more than a trick of the mind when you're isolated in the wilderness, accompanied by an overactive imagination. Most people who have heard the legend of the whistle 
experience nothing. Perhaps only the natural paranoia you might feel when you're walking in the woods alone. There are, however, those that swear they have encountered this entity. What I do find disturbing is that, from these accounts that you're about to hear, there are remarkable consistencies in the details of their stories. It looks human, but it isn't. It's pale. It's pale gray flesh. It's so pale, almost white. It has no color. It's gold, like skeletal, and it's tall. Oh, gosh. It's thin. It's skinny. It blends into the trees. That's why I didn't notice it at first. It just stands there and watches. I can feel it watching me. It's like it's waiting. It waits for you to look away, and then it moves closer. You never see it move. Its eyes are sunken. Hollow somehow. Oh my gosh, it has the blackest eyes. The eyes peak. Something. Like it's close to me. Like I can picture exactly what they're talking I'm about. Like what I'm picturing is not. pretending. Like it's wearing a face. Like it's wearing a costume. You hear it first. The whistle. That child, bro. Remember now. You know it's close because of the whistle. The whistling became louder. I could hear myself. It was my whistle. Calling back to me. Getting closer. I was terrified. Uh, I've never experienced anything like it. I ran, but it followed me. It's fast. So fast. It's unnatural. It was like it was toying with me. I still see it. The anticipation of this creature is ridiculous. I'll never get the image of that thing out of my head. So you know it's human like really skinny, pale, uh, so you can barely see it in the woods, would make sense. It's tall. Uh, it can blend in with the trees really well because it's skinny. It has sunken eyes. So it's like dark eyes because it's sunken down. Yeah. So it seems scary as hell. But I like the fact that they, like you stated a mask Cause I was like, even if you're using like some type of mask and stuff for the character, you can kind of justify it with that. Is wearing clothing. The anticipation, bro. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't necessarily put away the camera, but it's best if you keep it moving. Ooh, shit.
Why are you just standing there looking at it? Move, bro. Move. <laughs> it said you had to go into civilization. Once you make it to civilization, you're fine. Move. I said I probably wouldn't have necessarily put the camera in the bag. I would have been trying to take pictures of it. Just in case even if I lose the camera, if someone comes across the camera, they can see exactly what I was doing, taking pictures and see what is out there. But you didn't mess up your whole leg, now you, you bump. So I will worry about my leg later and keep it moving. I try to. I will be in so much pain trying to get the heck out of there. Phone crack. You are. Just, you are. You fuck, buddy. <laughs> Where you gonna go? Where you gonna run? Where you gonna hide? Nowhere. You gotta get over your moving. Shake that shit off and keep it moving. Pick up your bag. It's gonna be right there in front of you. You had gotten every, all the information you needed from this freaking podcast. You know the only place you can be safe is if you make it to civilization. You have to move. Buddy, 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 buddy. Uh, I actually thought this was pretty good. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, again, that was Whistle from Super Freak Media's uh, channel. Um, I want to say it was directed and written by Lane Banks. I want to say that's what the name was. It was on her, uh, Liam Banks or something like that. Um, apologize, I'm horrible with names, so... <laughs> There's people, places, or things. Um, but yeah. It was it was pretty good. I liked the podcast whole thing. I liked that they had different people on the podcast, even though one of the people's voices was the person, the, uh, the podcast host, it sounded like. But yeah, I liked that aspect of everything that was going for it. Um, I liked the whole idea of the whole whistle thing and the whole story concept. I thought they did a good job with that. I would say as far as what the creature looked like, it wasn't, it didn't look like what I was thinking it would. Um, no one too much, I, I have to re-watch it just to see because I don't remember anyone mentioning like cloth clothing as far as the creature having. Because uh, I know that it still seems skinny, it still worked into the aspect. But I was like, on most of the parts you can't really tell that it's pale, you just know what it's wearing is white. Um, 
so the pale, the gray situation, I was like, I don't know if those situations without the cloth, or they had seen it past the cloth, but the cloth would, like, knock down some of the things that I would, uh, would describe it, uh, with. Yeah, it was still pretty good, though. Uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> I thought they, the looks, the shots and stuff was pretty, pretty good. As far as, uh, the scare ratings, uh, I would give it a... I give it a seven. I was trying to think hard on it. I was like, the, the anticipation and stuff was there. The, uh, you know, the weight and the hold. Is this going to be the shot type of deal? Um, where he comes out and jumps out. You get that at the end. But a lot of the anticipation on a couple of the shots, I think, kind of worked. With getting you hyped for it. And then it doesn't happen. I think those, pretty wor oh, those worked out pretty nice. And then when it's just randomly there... Uh, you know, the freak out moments of what the character is going to do, you know, the, it gets the audience more into wanting to, uh, verbalize, wanting to go, hey, like, what would they, like, they were putting themselves in the situation, hey, what will I do, come on, bro, you got to do this, you know, so I do like that aspect of panic, because it gives the, uh, the audience the time to panic, so I'll give about a seven, as far as the scare rating, um, but let me know what y'all think about it as far as just what scare ratings and stuff y'all give it. But, um, yeah, if, uh, let me know what y'all also think about it entirely. Just not the scare rating, but the whole entire thing. Down in the comments below, show uh, Super Freak Me give some love. Uh, <laughs> if you like this video, please put a like on the video. If you like, subscribe. See some more of my reactions and videos, please do. Thank you all so much for jumping on and giving me a try. I really do appreciate it. Please do take care of yourselves and others. Peace, geek, them.